the Dustin right in front of you here, man. Um, obviously disappointing with the outcome tonight, but uh, now that you've had a little time to reflect on what happened in there, can you just give us you know, some more thoughts uh, aside from what you said in the cage? The guy's good, man. Uh, he's a world champ. Maybe I could have done more. You know, hindsight's twenty twenty. I was very prepared for this fight, to fight 25 minutes. He did exactly what I thought he was going to do. Maybe, you know, of course I'm going to beat myself up and I'm the only one who has to deal with this, me and my family. But uh, I'm all just wondering if, if maybe against the fence when I got under hooks, if I could have tried a little bit harder to get off the fence, maybe, you know, but that's just questions that I'm going to have to live with for the rest of my life. I thought for sure he was winning the rounds, obviously, taking me down and dominating, but I felt like he was squeezing hard. We were getting slicker. Uh, I felt like he was getting a little weaker. I, I Coming into this fight, I thought later in the third, fourth, and fifth were going to be my rounds. Not that I was planning on giving up the first two, but I knew they were going to be tough. So coming back to the stool after each, each of those rounds, in the beginning, I uh, wasn't getting up, damaged a whole lot. With, with shots that were hurting, he cut me. But uh, I thought the deeper we got into the fight, the, the more slick I was going to be able to be. But, uh, you know, that's fighting, man. Stuff is, 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 is tough. Yeah, and it seems like you got him with a couple of good shots in the second round, and then that guillotine seemed pretty deep. Um, how close did you feel you were in those two moments? The guillotine was really deep. But for the rest of my life, I'm going to look back and Wonder why I didn't jump full guard with it. I just threw one leg over so he couldn't pass to, to take the choke off. I should have jumped full guard. I don't know why I went shin across the stomach with the right leg or whatever I had, a butterfly with it. I should have went full guard so he couldn't roll out and relieve the pressure. Um, when I heard him, maybe in the back of my head, the takedown was, I felt like I couldn't get anything going with my stand up. He, he's very awkward. He dips his head and throws uppercuts. We never got into a, an, like an orthodox kickboxing or boxing exchange on the feet. It was all one punch at a time or him dipping and throwing a knee or him dipping and throwing an uppercut. I, I didn't get a rhythm. I felt like the way he was, he was pulling back, it was hard for me to set up my, sh my, my combinations and get, in, get into a rhythm. Uh, you know, I know I, I sound like I have a, a lot of excuses, but... I was just so prepared, you know, for tonight. This one really hurts. Uh, and I know it's probably not what's on the top of your mind right now, but uh, Habib did say after the fight he was going to donate to your charity. And then I don't know if you heard Dana when you're in the back there. He said he's going to match whatever Habib contributes. What does that mean to you? You know, it's, it's great, you know, because... Uh, it's going to help a lot of people. We're building a water well in Uganda. So, you know, that I'm sure with the memorabilia sold, we're going to reach the goal and uh, build a solar power water well with a tower for the pygmy people in an uh, orphanage and school in, U in Uganda. So I'm proud of that, you know. But I wanted to leave tonight the world champ and uh, just let myself down, man. But I, I appreciate them, you know, helping out the charity. It's been growing, and I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Dustin, over here. Uh, I was wondering if the heat affected your cardio at all. Did you feel it in the arena? A lot of fighters were complaining about how hot it was. No, it didn't. I felt good. You seemed to wobble, uh, Khabib, in the second round. Uh, did you think you could potentially, potentially finish him, him at that point in the second round? Yeah, I knew I had him hurt. He does a really good job of, of uh, you know, keeping a good poker face and not, not acting like he's hurt, but I saw his legs go. I had trouble landing my shots. I, started, I was worried about his takedown. I, I started throwing a lot of looping shots, not being slick and setting up combinations. And... Uh, the shot that I hurt him with, I believe I threw a jab cross and switch stance. That way I can still be in range with power shots when he pulled back. And I threw a, a right straight from an orthodox stance that, that clipped him and hurt him. He circled well. Had a good poker face. 
I, I didn't go crazy like I usually do. I kind of pulled back after I threw a, threw a couple looping shots that missed. Uh, I think I threw a knee right after that that clipped him a little bit too. I think I hurt him with that as well. I just didn't do enough, you know, and uh, I have to live with it for the rest of my life. Um, just going back on uh, on the charity work, uh, Dana White actually just said that he would match what Khabib gets uh, uh, for for the fight gear that he was wearing tonight. Um, does that, you know, what, what's your take on that? I, I, like I said, I'm very appreciative of that. I'm trying to get this thing as big as I can. I just partnered up with Everlast. We're launching a campaign together with the Good Fight Foundation and, and Everlast. We're going to be the official charity of Everlast, and that's worldwide. So I think we're going to do some great things with that. I, uh, you know, I have a lot of good things going. I'm just trying to do as much as I can and help as many people as I can, you know, uh, with these fights. I built a pretty good life for me and my family through this, and I'm just trying to do as much as I can with it. Dustin Poirier, uh, this is Shadi Unleashed, Alain TV. Um, um, you finished Dustin Gaethje, you finished Anthony Perez, Eddie Alvarez. I'll tell you a bad motherfucker. Do you think you, you'd be interested in uh, fighting next? Um, Masvidal versus um, Nate Diaz? If I'd be what? Would you be interested in fighting next? Miles Vidal and Nate Diaz. It's the BMF belt, so you're a BMF, so. Uh, George is a buddy of mine. Uh, I don't sell out like fucking Kobe Covington and talk bad about people who I roll with. No, nah, George is a buddy of mine. I won't fight him. He's a training partner. He's a good guy. Uh, if anything, I'll go out to Florida and help him for that fight. Hi, uh, to your left, uh, Alex Cornwell from Reuters. Um, once you, I guess, take some time off down the road, what happens next in your career? Man, it's tough to say right now. You know, this was my 41st fight tonight. I'm only 30 years old. I, uh, I've just been through so much in, in my fighting career. It's like, I, I don't know what's next, you know? I thought, to, honestly, the last 10 weeks of, of training camp and preparing for this fight, I thought the stars were aligning and I thought this was my night, you know? I thought this was like destiny, but I don't want to just keep crying up here in front of you guys, man, but this just means a lot to me. And, uh, you know, to get, to get, to have a performance like that. And uh, in the moment I was just waiting for the each round, I thought I was going to start pulling away and and start out pacing him later on in the fight. But he's just so, his balance and uh, his weight distribution against the fence, and then when he's on top, it's, it's so, so strong. Physically, he didn't feel overwhelming. I've, I've fought guys that are stronger than him, but skill-wise and balance-wise, he, he felt really good. I, uh, I just really thought tonight was gonna, I was going to, fly back home to the United States, undisputed world champ. So this really hurts, but I'm gonna go back home and talk to my wife. You know, like I said, I have a lot of tread left on the tires, I feel. I felt good out there tonight. I felt good this whole training camp. I just, I'm not fighting just to fight. You know, I've been fighting to be the world champ. So these opportunities don't come that often. I just need to go back home and, and then uh, think about what, yeah, could, the what could be next for me. Dusty is uh, all about MMA from Brazil. I just want to say you are a very young guy. You have a, a long career in the future. I just want to say you fight very well tonight. It was um, unbelievable to see how you fight. So keep your head and go ahead. You, you are a very good fighter. You are a very good fighter. Just go home, rest a little bit. God have a good future for you in the UFC. Don't worry. Thank you, man. I've I'm familiar with adversity. It's just I have to live the rest of my life asking myself if, if I could have done more, if I could have maybe escaped some of those takedowns, if I could have pushed harder uh, when I had my underhooks against the fence. Those are the, the questions that will haunt me. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I've lost before.
Hello, Dustin. Uh, at press conference uh, in London before this fight, um, Habib, he actually praised you as a fighter. He said a lot of good things about you. But he also said that you had never felt a pressure, like the pressure he was going to put on you, that you had never felt anything like that before. Can you say something about it? Um, what is that like, Habib's pressure? It's tough, you know, like I said, it, it, did, it didn't feel overwhelmingly strong, but he felt very intelligent with his balance, uh, with his decisions. When he would regrip or trip me along the fence, uh, he's just very skilled, very skilled grappler with good hips. You know, he, his pressure felt, felt, felt high level. Dustin, um, just reflect on this week, you know, coming in, it was dubbed as enemy territory, but in the cage right after the fight, the crowd, the way they cheered you, uh, just tell me, I, I know it's not what you, probably think about now but look, when you reflect back I'm sure uh, you'll appreciate kind of the crowd and how they re received you and, and the respect they've shown you yeah I uh, want to apologize to anybody who I offended by saying I was coming into enemy territory it was the complete opposite this is the smoothest most welcoming fight week I've ever had in my career and I fought uh, cities all over different countries and uh, Abu Dhabi was Amazing, the people were great. Everywhere I went, the service was great. It was one of the best, you know, which, which added to me thinking that, that it was all coming together tonight. I just had, it was the best week I've had in, in uh, preparing for a fight, the best weight cut, you know. I have no excuses. You know, Khabib is a world champ. Thank you, guys.